Welcome to the general chemistry section of our practice MCAT questions. In this video, we're going to be going through questions 16 to 20. So first I'll show you guys a question so that you can pause the video and attempt them on your own. Here's question 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now we can go through the questions together. In question 16, we're asked, what is the molarity of pure ethanol, assuming its density is 0.8 grams per milliliter? So we're asked for the molarity of ethanol, and then we're given its density, which is this much. So we are looking at pure ethanol, meaning that we don't have to worry about ethanol being dissolved in something like water and figure out like the weight of ethanol, but we just have pure ethanol. So that simplifies things. We're looking for molarity, the symbol for that is this big M, and the equation is moles over liter. And then we also have to find out how many moles of ethanol we have. And to get moles, it's mass over molar mass. So ethanol, what it looks like is two carbons, and then one of them has an OH group and then everything else attached to the carbons are hydrogens. So that's what the structure will look like. Therefore, its chemical formula is C2H5OH. And you should be able to use this chemical formula and get the molar mass, which is 46 grams per mole. So that is how you get molar mass. You need to know the chemical formula of a substance and then know that if we have two carbons, the molar mass of a carbon is 12, so times two, one for the hydrogens and then 16 for the oxygens, add that together and you get 46. So now we have the molar mass. And then to get the molarity, we can just do one big equation. The molarity is equal to, first we take the density, which is 0 0.8 grams over liters, sorry, milliliters, we want to convert this into liter, liters and to make it more simpler, we can make it just one liter. So let's say we had one liter at the bottom. How many milliliters would go into that? A thousand. And now our milliliters cancel out. So now we have liters in the denominator, which is what we want, but we, all, we want moles in the numerator. And right now we have grams grams is mass, so that means that we just need to divide by molar mass to get moles in the numerator. So if we divide this by 46 grams per mole, the grams will cancel out and we'll get moles in the numerator. All of that will equal to about 17.4 moles over liters, which is the same thing as molarity. So C is our correct answer. In question 17, it says an enzyme is capable of changing all of the following except blank. So an enzyme can change some factors of a reaction except for what? So if we have some energy diagram, the x-axis is the progression of the reaction. On the y-axis, we can have energy. Let's say we have delta H. This is what a reaction will look like. On the left side, we have the reactants. Right side, we have the products. So we're going from reactants to products. We have to go over this energy barrier before we can go to the other side and turn the reactants into products. At the top, we will have our transition state. So we need an energy barrier to get to the transition state, and then we can go downhill and reach the product side. But there are, at a given time, you know, a certain amount of particles that are able to overcome this energy barrier and go towards the products. And then we can do some things to a reaction mixture to make it more likely to go towards products such as increasing heat, increasing temperature. And then another thing we can do is add an enzyme. And what an enzyme will do is it will lower this activation barrier. So this energy over here is the energy of activation, the energy that you need to get over the activation barrier. The enzyme lowers that. But one thing which does not change is this difference between reactants and products. That is called our delta H. That enthalpy dis difference, that energy difference, does not change 
whether we use an enzyme or not. All that changes with the enzyme is lowering the activation energy. So if we lower the activation energy, that means there are more molecules in the solution that are able to get over the activation barrier. Therefore, the rate of the reaction is going to increase. But once again, the energy difference between reactants and products does not change when we use an enzyme. So option A is saying an enzyme can change activation energy. Yes, that's true. That is something it changes. B, the rate of a particular reaction. Yes, if more molecules can get over the barrier, then that changes. C, the rate of the reverse of a particular reaction. Yes, that is also something an enzyme changes. It lowers the activation barrier, which makes it possible to go from reactants to products. And then also, if there's a reaction in equilibrium, it can also go backwards from products to reactants. The energy barrier is lower. So same thing applies. That rate is also increased. But D is the correct answer here. It cannot affect the enthalpy of formation of a compound, which is the difference between reactants and products. So the enthalpy of formation is dependent on the bonds you break and the bonds you form. And that is a characteristic of the actual reaction and the bonds themselves. And it's not going to be changed when we have an enzyme present. Question 18 is saying the oxidation number on sulfur in sulfuric acid is blank. So we are looking for the oxidation number specifically of the sulfur in sulfuric acid. So our chemical formula for sulfuric acid is H2 SO4. Hydrogens have a plus one oxidation number, but since there are two, overall it's contributing one times two plus two oxidation. Oxygen has a negative two oxidation number. Since there are four, it is contributing a negative eight oxidation number. And you can notice that the whole molecule overall is neutral, H2SO4. Therefore, our oxidation numbers have to add up to be zero. So right now we have plus two and minus eight. That means we have negative six. So therefore, sulfur has to be plus six. And then we, when we add everything together, we get zero. So to answer questions like this, look at elements that you already know what their charge most likely is. Hydrogen is almost always plus one. Oxygen is usually found as minus two, right? So you know those ones. Just see how many of those elements you actually have. And then just use your math, see what the overall charge is for the molecule and see if it needs to add up to negative one or zero or plus one, whatever it is. And the rest of that should come from the element that you care about, which in this case is sulfur. So C is our correct answer. In question 19, it says alpha decay most commonly takes place in atoms with a large proton to neutron ratio. Which of the following atoms has the lowest proton to neutron ratio? So we want the lowest proton to neutron ratio. So protons over neutrons. So if we have a low ratio, that means that we have more neutrons and then comparatively fewer protons. And so to answer this, we can look at our periodic table and we are looking for PO and PB. So they're found over here. Lead has an atomic number of 82. Polonium has an atomic number of 84. Therefore, the atomic number is telling us the amount of protons that we have. So 84 in options A and B and 82 in options C and D. And then we also have to find out how many neutrons we have. That we can get from the atomic weight. So 209 is telling us the atomic weight of this isotope, meaning that this is the weight of protons plus neutrons. So to get the weight of just the neutrons, take the atomic weight minus how many protons we have, the remainder must be neutrons. Therefore we get 125 for this, then 126, 128, 127. That's how many neutrons we have. And then you can see the lowest amount of protons that we have are in C and D. And then the most amount of neutrons that we have is in option C. So option C has the least protons and most neutrons. Therefore, it has the lowest proton to neutron ratio. So C is our correct answer here. In question 20, it says the formal charges on each atom 
of carbon dioxide are blank. So formal charges on the atoms in carbon dioxide. This is what the structure of carbon dioxide looks like. And then if we actually look at the electrons in the bonds, the way that you should look at formal charge is by thinking about the actual valence electrons that an element has and then how many it has around it at the present moment in the Lewis structure that we've drawn. So carbon has four valence electrons. How many does it have around it right now? And in this case, we're counting in a bond just one electron. So one, two, three, and four. So carbon wants to have four around it and it does have four. Therefore, carbon is neutral, so no formal charge. And then over here on the oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And oxygen does have a valence charge, or sorry, a valence electron count of six. Therefore, its formal charge is zero. So the correct answer in this question is A, we have a zero formal charge, no formal charge on any of the elements in carbon dioxide. And another way that you can quickly answer this is just by when you do a lot of questions in general and organic chemistry, you'll see the number of bonds that elements like to have. Carbon likes to have four bonds, and you see that it does. Oxygen likes to have two bonds, and you see that both of the oxygens have that. If oxygen had one bond or three bonds, then it would have a charge because this deviates from the amount of bonds that it likes to have to stay neutral. But either way, you should know that there is no formal charge on any of the elements in carbon dioxide. That's it for the video. The questions in this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, make sure to check out our course. The link is in the description below. And in that course, we go through a lot more questions just like this and go through all the different answers explaining why each one is correct or incorrect and why. Other than that, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with the videos that we post here. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.